Thank you, Brian, for that uh, very nice introduction. And welcome, everybody, to this really amazing summit. Um, I think it is so important to empower every person who is in the circle of treatment of cancer, and that includes our physicians, our nurses, our caregivers, and most importantly, our patients. I'm an immunologist myself, and I can't resist just telling you a short story about immunotherapy because Peter Coley, who is the great grandson of William Coley, a New York City surgeon, is here today. This is about 100 years ago and was really the birth of the knowledge of the immune system. Dr. William Coley was a surgeon in New York City, and he made a very prescient observation at the bedside of a couple of his patients. He noticed that patients, after the removal of their tumor, who developed an infection in the wound site, sometimes went into complete remission from their tumor. And he was looking specifically at a couple of young men, I believe, with sarcoma, which, is, which is a, can be a tough tumor. And he reasoned that there must be some endogenous system in the body that recognized the bacteria that was in the wound and that at the same time that it became activated to kill off the bacteria, it was also killing off the tumor cells. And so he took this bacterial lysate from the wound sites and he started administering it to patients as uh, Coley's toxins. He did, got a lot of skepticism at the time, but he persisted and some patients did quite well. That was ultimately um, followed by radiation and chemotherapy, but I think it was really the birth of the idea that our immune systems should be able to respond to tumors and tumor cells because they display on their surface foreign proteins. And your own immune system should say, wait a minute, I don't recognize that tumor cell as being part of myself, and so I'm going to kill it. And that really was the birth of immunotherapy. And then for many, many years, really almost a century, cancer biologists and immunologists tried to activate your own immune system, but did not have much success until the pioneering efforts of Jim Allison and also of uh, Dr. Gordon Freeman here at Dana-Farber, who discovered the second target for immunotherapy, uh, now marketed as uh, drugs like Keytruda and Opdivo. So I believe we have made enormous progress in immunotherapy, but we are just at the tip of the iceberg. We still can treat only about 10 different tumors are responsive to immunotherapy, and within that, only some patients will respond. But here at Dana-Farber, we are doing the kind of breakthrough research, which you're going to hear about throughout the day, to make that number 100% of patients. At Dana-Farber, we all have one mission, and that is to relieve the burden of cancer in our patients. And we do it as a team, as a family. We try to surround each patient. And so it's incredibly important for us to get feedback and listen to and hear from our patients about their experience. For that reason, we have put together a, fa a patient family advisory council in both pediatric oncology and adult oncology so that we can get feedback every, every few weeks from that council. And I attend many of those meetings to hear what our patients are thinking and what we can do better. I am just always so inspired by the dedication of everybody here at Dana-Farber, from the oncologists themselves to our valet parking people who will greet you and say, what can I do to help get you to your appointment? Or our security guards, our thousands of wonderful volunteers, our nurses, our nutritionists, our social workers all surround our patients as a team to make sure that they deliver the very, very best experience possible. And I'm thinking, when I think of a success story of one patient in particular, um, her brain tumor had spread 
uh, despite six years of repeated surgeries and radiation and chemotherapy. And in 2016, she came to this institute uh, to join a new clinical trial that had been, and you'll hear more from David Reardon shortly about that. And the trial was uh, the immunotherapy nivolumab, which targets a, the, that particular protein that our scientist, Dr. Gordon Freedom, Freeman, discovered. And it had not thought to be uh, work in, in glioblastoma, but in this patient, uh, when her tumor tissue was looked at, there was a big surprise. What had been thought as a, a recurrence of the tumor was actually just a pseudotumor and was really just dead cells that had responded to the immunotherapy. So it looked like she had worsening disease, but in fact, she was getting better. It had worked dramatically, uh, but not in the way that had been expected. So we always have to keep our minds open to new ways, new approaches to immunotherapy, and you're going to hear a lot about that. But that was a pivotal breakthrough here at Dana-Farber. So patients, patients are our partners in advancing cancer research and cancer care. In fact, according to a recent report from the Cancer Research Institute, which, with which I have been associated for probably 30 years, uh, a wonderful, wonderful institution, um, there are probably around 2,200 clinical trials that are going on right now with immunotherapy and in so many different cancers, almost every kind of cancer, including forms that currently have been shown to be unapproachable, are now turning out by using combination therapy to be approachable. Cancer vaccines plus checkpoint blockers, for example, you hear more about that. So I think immuno immunotherapy has really revolution revolutionized the way that we deliver cancer care. You're going to hear much more about this as, as uh, you go through this wonderful day. Uh, I'm disappointed that I'm not able to stay here uh, for the whole meeting, but um, one of my grandsons is coming into town, or is in town for the weekend, and I don't get to see him all that often, so I will be leaving you to spend time with him. I'm sure I will be much more exhausted spending the day with him than I would be if I stayed here. But before I leave, I did want to thank all of you um, today who are taking part in this summit, the patients, the caregivers, the oncologists. We have uh, experts uh, from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, but we also have uh, experts from uh, Massachusetts General Hospital and Boston's Children's Hospital. Um, Boston Children's Hospital is a valued partner of ours, and indeed we did rank uh, for the fifth time uh, the number one pediatric oncology cancer care center in the country. And it's now my pleasure to invite Dr. David Reardon, who is the director of our Center for Neuro-Oncology and professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Uh, David is a magnificent clinician and is also a highly respected uh, researcher. He performs many clinical trials and has published recently some really breakthrough papers in the top journals uh, for research in the country. And he's going to talk about uh, his focus on immunotherapy and biologically based therapies. He's published more than 270 articles on his research and has received the R. Wayne Rundles Award for Excellence in Cancer Research. So with that, um, and he actually served as president of the, the 10th president of the Society for Neuro-Oncology, a distinct honor in 2013. He's going to lead our first session today on the basics of immunotherapy. So please join me in welcoming Dr. David Reardon. Thank you.